Favaro, the company behind the Asioma pedal power meter product, and probably one of the simplest, easiest to use, almost idiot proof products, has just released a new update to their firmware. And what this firmware does is it, it enables the cycling dynamics feature set. And we've seen cycling dynamics for the last few years. It's been on every Garmin Vector product, including the very first generation. And it's normally been called the Garmin Cycling Dynamics. Now it's being released in the AMP Plus profile so that every company can actually use, have access and can transmit that data. But not only that, companies can receive and decode that data and check for compatibility and record that data appropriately. A few years ago, I had a conversation with one of the people who was, I guess, a developer at Training Peaks. They're now more the managerial director type level. Um, very, very smart guy. And what they were doing at Training Peaks at the time was using these newer metrics that had just come out and that were actually, I believe, these were actually pushed by Rotor. The pedal sm smoothness and the torque effectiveness were actually um, developed and pushed by the rotor brand of, um, of equipment when they came out with their first power meter. They were using the balance and these metrics to actually kind of disassemble the power data because they could take the power, they could split it into the left and the right, then they could figure out how much is pushing down and how much is being lost on the upstroke. So you could do things like, in theory, instead of training to increase your, your downstroke, you could train to increase your upstroke, in theory. None of this has really been proven out, so you could get the same wattage gains on your FTP by improving efficiency. And that's what these metrics were kind of trying to get at, is trying to show you efficiency. No real training theory and no ideal pedal stroke has really evolved out of this, and some training theory actually goes the other way. They actually kind of say that just training harder and harder and harder to try and elevate that, your muscles will kind of figure it out. Um, I don't know, but what I do know is that when we got cycling dynamics in a third party product, and even technically I, I was able to do this with just Vector, um, but now it seems more relevant because if a third party is doing it, there's more companies that can give you the when. When are things happening in your pedal stroke? So let's go through this and see how that when actually can really improve understanding and generate things like a, a, a plot like this or a polar plot of your pedal stroke. With all this data, let's go through the process of reassembling a curve from all of these metrics. So the first thing we need to do is we need our power to split into left and right. And this is only valid for true left, right reading power meters. The power to max and quarks, you cannot do this. In fact, you're missing the torque effectiveness, so this won't work at all. And they also can't do cycling dynamics. So they kind of fall down here. So we take our power, split it into our left and right. And we assume, or most people's curve looks something like this shape here in blue. So with our power now disassembled, and we know what our cadence is at that time, we essentially can figure out that we have this flat torque curve. Now that's not the actual curve, that's our average. But that average is our starting point. Because from that, our pedal smoothness metric allows us to figure out that there's a peak related to this. And that's what this is, the percentage of how high is that peak compared to the average. So we know how high this peak is. And we know that this is the general shape, so we have a starting and an end point and a, and a peak. I can't really do much with the torque effectiveness right now, but I can after cycling dynamics. So this essentially lacks all the when. And that's what cycling dynamics is, or at least the part that I'm looking at. It also encompasses platform center offset, Asioma isn't supporting this, and uh, they say there's reasons. There is a different reason, I suspect, though, and I might have to go back and revise the video because of it. Um, however, Cycling Dynamics talks about the when. 
When do you cross to zero in the pedal stroke? When do you hit 50% up on the upstroke? And uh, on the end of that, that your power stroke, when do I hit 50% again? When do I hit zero? And we know when it resets because that's just this point over here. So we now have a lot of these wins. But because of pedal smoothness, we also have added in a couple of watts. So we know what this value is here, but we know that these, if you leave the default settings in your cycling computer alone, that these are normally set to 50%. You'll have to adjust my code a little bit if you want to change them and that will change the shape of things. But we know how much and when this is, how much and when this is. These are both zero and we know when they occur. We know when this occurs. What we don't know is when this occurs and what and when this is, that peak. So this is where I have to make a couple of assumptions, but because we're creating a seven point polar plot or seven point per rotation um, thing, we really, the guesses are probably going to be decently accurate. They're not going to, by moving them either way, it's not going to skew the calculations much. So I'm going to assume that this peak here happens exactly dead center between these. I'm going to assume this peak happens dead center between these, and I'm just going to draw some lines between them. And what I'm left with is um, a very simplified shape. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So we have all of this data out here, but we don't know how tall this is. But with torque effectiveness, we know that the area here has to be related to a percentage, the torque effectiveness percentage to this area. So we calculate this up as one, two, three, four triangles, one big rectangle, and then we know that percentage. So we say, ah, you know, it's 20%. And we use two triangles here to figure out where that peak is. And that fills in all the blanks to create a, I'll call it medium speed data. But the really cool thing is that now that this is finally a standard that most developers have access to, it means that there's no reason why most power meter companies can't come along and within a few weeks, update their hardware to include this. Um, Companies that are only producing left side data and doubling it, you can sort of back this out, but only for your left leg. Um, it should actually work pretty well, but again, only left leg. And as you can see from well, um, the videos on screen for the polar plots, your left and right leg shapes don't match up a lot of the time. And this is where a lot of that left right balance variance comes in that on average, you might be 50%, but there's so many factors that I'm not a big proponent of left-only power meters. So yeah, feel free to get the code in the GitHub. Uh, you're going to need Python and a few libraries to get it running. But yeah, I actually have an animation command in it so you can just export it as an animation. It'll take a little bit to run. Um, I've got an eight core uh, desktop that's you know 16 threads and stupidness going on. And it, it takes a few minutes to plot out an hour long ride. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully some companies, hopefully, you know, if uh, that guy from Training Peaks, I won't mention his name, if he's watching, you know, get that GitHub code implemented all you want. Um, same with Trainer Road and all these guys, it's on GitHub, just follow the steps. It could be better documented. Um, while I was actually filming this, I was interrupted with a package related to the Maelstrom fan controller. So that's awesome, although it ruined that take. And uh, yeah, um, happy riding. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is the Fit SDK and appar apparently Flash. Um, so you can just go in here. You don't actually have to be an Amplus adopter to actually get the SDK. I'm not even logged in, as you can see in the corner, well, or not, just accept the agreement and it'll start downloading. And once you have that, you extract it and you navigate to the Java folder, put your fit files in here. And we're going to go to the command line. There's a few different batch files in here, but the one we want is actually the fit to csv.data. 
So we have to convert them one at a time. Um, and I'll show you what that data does that's different than the regular fit to CSV. I just convert that other file. So when we open it, you'll, you'll actually see that the descriptor is in the column next to the data. And this is how the fit files kind of record um, in a, a much more defined way. This is just converted straight out. But that means that, you know, if, if one data element is missing, such as, you know, what's happened here, you get this skew and not everything is in the correct field. So it creates a data version of it, which is nice, but it sometimes skips timestamps or duplicates timestamps. And for the cycling dynamics, we've got multiple pieces of data stored in the one field. So I have to sort that out as well. So those duplicates we'll sort out first um, with these data files. So copy those into the folder that you cloned from the GitHub. We're going to use this fit CSV file clean. And what it does is it reads it in, it drops duplicates, re-indexes it, and that index is in that timestamp slot. And then it interpolates through it, and then it dumps it out to a CSV file with underscore clean. But I only wrote this to do one file at a time. Um, so let's just temporarily rename one of these files so that we can convert that um, 14th file, August 14th of last year, or July 14th. And then we'll rename um, that file, the, we just convert it, rename that other one. So this is just how to deal with if you're, you want to do multiple files with that cleaning stuff. So you will need to do that. If not, it can generate some bogusness. And we'll convert that. And you can see how you know, the dates that it converted are different. They're just based on the file endings. So once you have that all done, we can go over into the cycling dynamics and we're going to read in one of the files that in the square brackets, that's which file in the folder, extract some basic stuff uh, from the data frame into just lists. And then we have to start extracting stuff from the cycling dynamics. So we have to use text split and convert it to floats and do that for every single one. And then we get into some basic calculations for timing. Um, so I calculated some the rev time from the cadence and then over 360 and uh, some output logs. This has to do with just dealing with the timing. So uh, if you want to do it in time plot versus uh, degree plot, you kind of need to sort that out, which, you know, because your, your power phase start can be below 360 or the zero. Um, this here is that calculation with the torque effectiveness. So all the little triangles and rectangles and then calculating it to be equivalent to those. And uh, oh, I've got some debug stuff left over here. And yeah, so it's just basic set up some figures, set the direction, the orientation, um, get the DPI. So set it up so it's a high def output, change that to angle there and uh, set up some plot colors. And then we actually create a little, um, little animation function um, after we initialized everything and some empty, uh, empty lists. And so we, we populate those lists. Um, on, you know, one is for time, one is for angle, the XLA is uh, for angle, but we have to convert those to radians. And we do that for the right. And then it just calls these functions, saves it out. And this is down here is manual plot, um, can be set for polar or 2D. And then you run it and you wait and you wait. And you eventually you open your task manager to see if it's still actually running. And it is. And then finally, after a few minutes, you'll, you'll get this and you'll see how it looks like the kind of polar plots we're f familiar with. So, um, and you can see how that peak is bouncing around considerably. So yeah, best not to time off of that wink, wink, nudge, nudge uh, for that one company that says they are. <clears throat> but yeah, this is kind of what you could see the difference in the left and the right. I believe my left is in blue, my right is in red. And it just outputs a file. It'll actually play a little bit faster in that file. You can set it by changing the frames per second in the command. And this, this here is all, 
is the zero point. So anything below that is actually negative, but it's a little hard to see. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was uh, useful to you.